Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. It's uh, about 7 in the morning and I've got a little project to go on in the shop I thought I'd share with you. I'm trying to process stainless steel. It's a relatively thin gauge and I need to cut it into 1 inch wide strips that are 12 inches long for the project. Um, you know, I looked at my shear. The shear really can't handle the gauge of stainless steel that it is. Uh, we have a Beverly shear or a throatless shear and cutting in a straight line as many pieces as I need to cut can be problematic. Plus it can leave the edges a little bit sharp. So I'm looking around the shop and I'm trying to figure out what can I use. And um, the clear answer was the plasma cam. But I had to make a few modifications to the machine. I'll show you what I did in a minute. Alright YouTube, here's my dilemma. I've got these long pieces of scrap uh, it's the exact material I need, and I'm saving a lot of money by using scrap. In fact, the project really doesn't yield enough money to buy the material brand new. So this is pretty much my profit margin, being able to take material like this and turning it into uh, the dimensions that I can use. With the plasma cam, um, now these machines are great. I use it all the time. If you want to put a piece of metal on this table and you want to cut out a, a nice pattern, no problem. The pattern and the skeleton rests on these points. Oh, well, if you can see those. But what happens when you're trying to cut strips is once you cut this, getting it to balance on those points for very long is a huge pain in the neck, um, especially when you're working with smaller pieces of material. And that's the problem I really needed to overcome. Now, this uh, particular plasma cam table uh, the points are positioned in such a way where I was able to take uh, a piece of metal wire shelving. You guys have all seen this stuff before. Um, usually it, these are all stainless steel. It's got the NSF stuff for uh, restaurant storage and whatnot. And these racks, if you get the right width, will fit right in between the points uh, from one side to the other and it literally wedges in there you you cannot move this at all it's it's not going anywhere and what's really nice about that is it makes sure that this shelf is square to the rest of the machine now this particular shelf isn't stainless steel so it's got some kind of coating on it which is well basically means that I don't have any kind of a ground so what I did is I took a piece of regular uh, scrap metal that I've cut some circles out of in the past it's just you know uh, piece of material around the shop and <clears throat> I have <clears throat> excuse me a jumper cable back there to serve as a ground so now I've got a grounded work surface um, I've created a stop that just simply clamps to the grid on the plasma cam and the difference between the grid and the tip of the plasma nozzle is what I need to cut my one inch wide strips now, I don't have this set up with the computer. Now, Plasma Cam pretty much implies that you're using some kind of a CNC program to run this machine. Um, just because I have all different lengths of material and I'm just cutting straight lines, it doesn't pay for me to take the time to program the machine to cut a bunch of random straight lines. Even making one cut pattern and trying to repeat it won't work because they're all different lengths. And if the computer doesn't detect an arc right away, it shuts off. So it's easier for me just to kind of control the plasma torch by hand. So the computer's not even turned on. In fact, uh, I've got a block that'll stop in the correct position for my, um, my X travel. The only thing that I'm using on this entire system is pretty much the Y axis. Now I've disconnected the belt drive because I don't want to you know, burn anything out or mess anything up. And I'm pretty much just grabbing this, pulling the torch, and moving the gantry towards myself, and using it as basically a big radial arm saw that can cut steel. Now, I am going to give you one word of warning. If you do decide to try something like this with your plasma cam, do not turn on the computer. Do not try to initialize the machine. Uh, for those of you who don't own one, when this machine initializes, all of the components go to the back corner of the machine and kind of zero out. So the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis all move. If you've got blocks preventing the travel of those components, you could do some serious damage to the machine. So don't even turn the computer on. In fact, 
I unplug the data cable, so there's no chance in hell this thing's going to initialize. Um, you would have to turn the machine on, plug the cable back in, boot up the computer, turn on the software, and initialize the machine before anything goes wrong. So this is one of those things where I'm not going to forget to take this stuff apart and put the machine the right way before I reinitialize the system. But the way this is going to work, I'm going to bring my material in, it'll go against the stop, I drag the plasma torch across using the y-axis of the machine, and I'll get really nice one-inch wide strips of stainless steel. So let's give it a shot. YouTube, there's my box of parts. Um, yep, took me about 45 minutes to set up the machine, get everything working. Uh, took me a little while to figure out that my cutting problem was caused by uh, the grounding issues of using a painted work surface. Go figure. You know, here I am, I'm supposed to be like welder guy, and forgot that hey, a ground is important even for plasma cutting. But it took a couple of test cuts, uh, a few you know pieces, trial and error, getting everything squared. About 45 minutes altogether, and then it took me about 15 minutes to cut the pieces. And now that I know all this stuff fits together, I can use this anytime I need to. So if uh, this becomes a repeat job, which actually it should, here I am, I've got the machine set up, I've got the blocks, I've got my jumper for the ground, and I know exactly what I need to do. To set this up in the future, it's literally going to take me 10 minutes. Um, now, this machine is, like I said, in a many different occasions it's, it's phenomenal and being able to disconnect it from the computer and use it as kind of a, a giant miter box or a giant radial arm saw if you will just adds a new dimension to what I can do with it and it just became a more valuable piece of equipment uh, being able to cut strips consistently that are an inch wide and I can go half inch three quarter it really doesn't matter with this setup programming that in the software well, yeah, you could, but as thin as the material is, if I'm cutting that close together, the material's going to warp, it's going to bend, and I don't have the digital, <coughs> excuse me, the digital height control on this system, so the Z-axis has to be programmed. It doesn't have the sensor on it that allows the torch to move up and down as the material flexes because of heat expansion. Um, that's another $1,000 option that I just haven't been able to afford for the machine yet. But uh, being able to use it like this really is uh, a time saver. And I don't know what I would have done without this, uh, without this machine. So um, I'm going to get going. And I'll show you what I'm trying to fabricate. I got a picture of them. And uh, we'll leave it there. All right, YouTube, there you have it. Well, now I can get my job done, which is always a good thing. Uh, it seems like 50% of what we've been doing lately is overcoming uh, different problems, troubleshooting, coming up with solutions to just to get things done. Um, the past couple of videos we've actually been uh, having issues with this camera. The tripod mount broke and we've been balancing this thing on saw horses and cinder blocks and ladders and uh, we're 
quite frankly surprised that the thing has survived up till now. There's even a little scratch in the lens that has a little bit of a blur in the video. But hopefully, uh, this will be this camera's last video. We're going to try to upgrade, get something a little bit better for you guys. Um, we've been getting quite a few subscribers, quite a few comments, and uh, you guys, you know, you are becoming really an important and integral part of this business because we wake up in the morning we get these really cool emails saying hey we love this or hey that was really cool that was creative keep them coming and it really does mean a lot to both Dana and I that um, you guys take the time to stop by watch our videos see what we're into and, uh, and keep us going and uh, we really look forward to getting more done in the future uh, once we get the new camera, we get all the snow removal equipment out of the garage, we have room to work again and film again, we'll be posting some more videos up to YouTube. Uh, we really enjoy it, and we uh, definitely like hanging out with you guys online. But until then, this is Jeff at Dark Moon Metals, and we will definitely be seeing you again soon.